Hello, welcome to Handsome Griffin's occasional uh, tutorial series in MATLAB. Today we'll be looking at the discrete cosine transform and masking out various coefficients. Now today we're not doing uh, quantization, so we're not looking at the compression, we're just looking at uh, the coefficients, and just masking out um, some of the higher frequencies and keeping the lower frequencies on hot effect that has when we do the inverse. So I ran the script, I published it and we're here. Okay so I did all of that, converted the image to grayscale here and just on this line here uh, the DCT will, you know, assumes it's integer 8 wide and integer 8 high. If it isn't you'd have to pad with zeros to make it Right, so what I did was I, I did a crop here and with those dimensions and those dimensions which is forced it to be integer 8 wide and high. And next thing I did was uh, the DCT works on the range minus 128 to plus 127 so I took away 128. I got the uh, DCT here from the MATLAB input function DCT MTX and what I did here was I took 8 by 8 blocks and I got the DCT of it. So my DCT is the f my anonymous function, my my DCT comma is the transpose and the block structure dot data. So I've explained before. So here we go. Your block processing, what, blo what are your block processing? Uh, the original function well, it was modified by the 128 in 8 by 8 blocks and the function that we're applying is the one that you defined here my DCT. So you've done all of that and then what did this mask do here? This mask here will keep the 10, well I was going to say the 10 lowest uh, AC but actually it's the DC and the lowest 9. Okay, So I ran uh, this anonymous function here, I defined it on this line and I ran it there, so what that does is it goes through 8 by 8 blocks and it's keeping the the 10 lowest coefficients. There's my DCT MTX function. So then I inverse my data, okay, defined my inverse function, ran it and added on the 128. There's the original in grayscale, and there's the. Now it's a bit hard to see, but you can kind of see here that you know it's it's a reasonable uh, representation, but it's not too bad. So I repeated this again, and I this time I upped the number of coefficients. I upped the number of frequencies. I upped the number of the AC. And this time I was keeping the, the 15 most important. Same functions again, anonymous that I defined above. And there's the 15 most important coefficients. So when you run this yourself, you would expect and hope that the 15 mask would be better than the 10 mask. I did it again, and this time I'm only keeping 3. Uh, terms. I'm keeping the DC and the two lowest AC. There's the image there. Now it's you'd make her out. It's fairly bad, but you'd make her out. And then finally, just I just do a mask where I only keep the DC component only. And there's the result. Now fairly heavily pixelated but yeah at a, at a stretch you might imagine. Some of the error metrics here I got the sum square errors for the four of them. For the 10 coefficients it's uh, 1 million. For the 15 it's 800,000 so you'd expect that the more terms you keep the lower the error. For I only kept three terms so you see it's uh, you expect the error will have shot up for 10 it was 1 million, for 3 it's 1.5 million and finally when we only did the 
uh, AC, we kept the um, that's right, we kept the DC and all the ACs are gone. The R jumps up to just over 2.1, nearly 2.2 million. Okay, so thanks for listening. Bye bye.